uh, lesson with momentum and impulse. Momentum is a physics term. Alex, it's the amount of motion an object has. If you have more momentum, you possess more motion amount. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I've tried to make it a bit clearer by doing four little stick figures. I've said that if suppose you have a really small mass. You know what? Let's make this a uh, ping pong ball. And a short, a small velocity. That's the significance, Haley, of the short arrow. So small mass, small velocity. A ping pong ball. Cohen, suppose I lobbed underhand a ping pong ball right at your face. Would you be all that worried? Do you think a ping pong ball possesses a lot of motion amount? Do you think a ping pong ball possesses... ...would say it has a small amount of momentum. Uh, but you can also have something with a small mass going really, 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 really fast. Can you think of something with a small mass that goes really, 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 really fast? would be why did the color change part way through let's try that again would be a bullet small mass big velocity Cohen if, and I, I apologize for being morbid here but if there was a bullet heading straight for your face would that worry you do you think a bullet has a small momentum or a large momentum What if we had a big mass going slowly, like, uh, oh heck, bowling ball. Cohen, if I lobbed this bowling ball underhand at your face, would that worry you? Yeah. Do you think a bowling ball has a small momentum or a large momentum? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I'm being vague on purpose. Uh, the worst would be if you had a big mass and a big velocity. Uh, hey, for example, an asteroid impact. You know what? I'm going to cross out large. I'm going to cross out small, and I'm just going to write the word uh, massively uh, huge. So momentum is a physics concept. It's how much motion an object has. Cohen, it depends on two things. Can, based on my examples here, can you figure out what two things momentum depends on? Or anyone else? Yeah. Mass and velocity. In fact, moment, so it says explain your answer. I'm going to skip that because we kind of just have, and we're going to go straight to the box. Momentum. The mass times the velocity. I'll put a vector on there to remind myself it's velocity and not speed. Problem. We can't use m for momentum because m is taken for what? Mass. So because it's a motion product, use letter p. p is momentum. Sorry, we're running out of languages, le letters in the English language, Sarah, but momentum is symbolized by the letter P, and it's mass times velocity. It is a vector. It has direction. It gets its direction from the velocity. In other words, if you're traveling north, if your velocity is north, you know what direction your momentum is? North. Uh, uh, Andy, if your momentum is southeast, you know which way your velocity is? Southeast, okay? Because mass is a scalar, momentum gets its direction from the velocity. What would it? Oh, so you know what? Let's make a little note here. Vector. Uh, that's going to be important. Direction is going to play a big a, a big role again. We're going to have to be much more careful again with our positives and negatives. What would the units be? Well, what do I measure mass in? Kilograms. What do I measure velocity in? So uh, units are kilogram meters per second. 
there is a movement afoot right now, and it hasn't happened yet, it might happen in your lifetime, to take that kilogram meters per second and rename it an Einstein, with probably a capital E as a symbol, I don't know. It hasn't happened yet, but he doesn't have a unit named after him. He probably should. The same way, uh, what was force measured, and what are the units for force? Newtons, but really it was a kilogram meter per second squared because it was a mass times an acceleration, and we just shortened it. We said, let's replace that with a capital M, we'll call it a Newton. They're talking about doing it with this one. This is about the longest unit that we haven't truncated or replaced. <coughs> Hasn't happened yet. So momentum is how much motion an object has. It's the mass times the velocity. This equation is on your formula sheet, although much like F equals MA, you'll probably end up memorizing this equation because you get sick of looking it up. Also, we kind of derived it intuitively. Yeah, it depends on two things, mass and velocity. Twice the mass, twice the momentum. Twice the velocity, twice the momentum. Turns out, you can also measure momentum in Newton seconds. That also ends up being kilogram meters per second if you're clever. Really? Yeah, I'll show you. What does Newton, what do Newtons measure? I'm looking for a word that begins with letter F. Force, and force was what times what? Force was what times what? The basic one. F equals MA. Okay, so a Newton is a kilogram mass meter per second squared acceleration. A Newton second would be that. You see it, Rebecca? I got one S here, one S here. That S will cancel with the squared. And I also end up with kilogram meters per second. Some textbooks will talk about momentum in Newton seconds. Some textbooks will talk about momentum in kilogram meters per second. In fact, there are reasons to use both. And you're going to notice that I flip-flop. If I happen to be thinking about a question in terms of forces, I'll probably write my momentum as a Newton second. If I'm happening to think about my, qu th about my question in terms of velocities, I'll probably write it as kilogram meters per second. I will take either from you. I will never mark you wrong, Mighty, if you always use kilogram meters per second. Courtney, I will never mark you wrong if you always use... Uh, I'm going to flip-flop in terms of context. It's just something I've evolved over the time. So momentum is what times what? Mass times velocity. It's how much motion an object has. Since I've just given you a new concept, I always like to let you figure out what's really big and really small. So fastball. Estimate the momentum of a person and bicycle on a relaxed ride. And estimate the momentum of a car driving on a city street. Okay, let's keep in mind that momentum is mass times velocity. Any baseball players here? No one. Okay. Anybody know how much a baseball weighs? Sorry, how much a baseball's mass is, because weight is mg, what the mass of a baseball is? Well, let's do some estimates. Does a what a hardball fastball? Um, does it weigh a kilogram? More than a kilogram or less than a kilogram? Less? I think, you know what? Here's my guess. I'm going to say it weighs about a quarter of a kilogram. You okay with that? Now, those of you that watch baseball on TV, in the major leagues, how fast do the top pitchers pitch? Miles per hour, because that's unfortunately how the U.S. still does its units. What does a top pitcher hit in the major leagues? Surely someone has watched a little baseball on TV. Oh, got someone coming in. Hang on. Yeah, uh, the best pitchers can hit 100 miles per hour. That doesn't help us much because it's miles per hour. Uh, well, it does. I happen to know that meters per second is a little less than half of miles per hour. I just picked that up over the years. So, you know what? It's going to be around 45, a little less than half of 100. About that. 
So the momentum is going to be mass times velocity. Can someone on their calculator go 0.25 times 45? I can do that in my head, because times by 0.25, that's like dividing by 4, right? 11.25, uh, somebody double check me. Yeah, OK. So the momentum of a baseball is about 11.25 kilogram meters per second. Let's go back to Cohen, since I seem to be injuring him. Cohen, if you were at bat and that baseball hit you right on the side, right there, would it kill you? No. Would it break bones? No. Would it hurt? That much momentum is ouch. It's I, but it's not hospital and it's not terminal. <coughs> if you had to absorb that all at once. All right. What about a bike and rider? All right. Let's make it an adult rider let's, and just let's make it an adult male. Okay. What's the mass in kilograms of an adult male? Well, here's the problem. We don't tend to measure mass in kilograms, even though we're metric. What do we still measure mass in? So what's the mass in pounds of an adult male, average? 100? 100 pounds? Too light? 300 pounds? So give me, what do you think? 180. 180-ish? I agree. I know that to go from pounds to kilos, you divide by around 2.2. So can someone on their calculator go 180 divided by 2.2? Sorry? 81. Let's, you know what? Nice round up. Let's go 80 kilograms. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We've got a bike as well, don't we? You know what? Let's call the whole thing 90 kilos, give or take. Nice round number. Okay, because that would also be bike, rider, clothing, shoes, helmet, the whole, whole schmear. Speed. It does say we're on a relaxed ride. So how fast, we'll do the speed first of all in kilometers per hour because most of you are driving and all of you have been in a car. Is 60 kilometers per hour a relaxed ride for a biker? Can a biker do traffic speed and be relaxed? No. What about 30 kilometers per hour school zone speed? Can a biker do that and be relaxed? Yeah-ish. Okay. Uh, so if we want to use 30 kilometers per hour as our benchmark, how do we go from kilometers per hour to meters per second? I remember it had something to do with a 3.6. Divide. So can someone on your calculator go 30 divided by 3.6? Sorry? 8.3. You know what? Let's go, how about a nice round number close to that? 10 meters per second. Now maybe that's not that relaxed, maybe 7 meters, because I'm imagining 10 meters per second. That's pretty fat, but we're just doing rough numbers here. And the reason I did that is I can do this in my head. All of you without a calculator, if you go mass times velocity, how much momentum, roughly, does a bike and a rider have? Somebody please, in your, all of you in your head, go 90 times 10. Courtney, what do you get? Yeah. Units, kilogram, meters per second. Courtney, or sorry, uh, no, Cohen seems to be my corpse of choice. Cohen, if you were walking on the sidewalk and a bike and rider hit you, would it kill you? Probably not. Would it break bones? Possibly. That could send you to a hospital. If you absorb that much momentum all at once, that's uh, injury. By the way, the next one, if a car hit you driving at city road speed, would that probably kill you? Prob so we'll, we'll also get a terminal level of momentum here too. Mommy, mommy, what did you learn in school today? Mr. Do it, kill it. Oh, shut up, go on. Okay, here we go. Uh, we need a mass for a car in kilograms. What do you think? Yeah, I think 1,000 is a nice round number. That's about 2,000 pounds. That's a, maybe a compact car, so, but it's a nice number to do math with. Okay, I'll go with that. Mass equals 1,000 kilograms. Then it says on a city street, What's the speed limit on, in kilometers per hour on a city street? You're getting your licenses or have them. Please, God, tell me you know this. 
By the way, you guys saw the news yesterday. Some kid was doing 250 kilometers per hour on Marine Drive. Man. Anyways, sorry, what's the speed limit on the city street? 50. 50 uh, divide that by 3.6. Let's, you know what? Let's go 15, a nice round number. Because again, I'm going to argue we can do that in our head. 15 times 1,000 is how much momentum? Alex, in your head, what's 15 times 1,000? Thank you. Really? You had to hesitate? and th You were concentrating there. Wow. Okay. Absorbing that probably would kill you. Okay. Well, actually, it depends on how fast you absorb the momentum. Pause for a second. I, I, I should say, actually, Alicia, it's not just how much momentum you have to absorb. It's how fast you have to absorb the momentum. In fact, in a few minutes, I'm going to give you a new equation for momentum that has time in it. Because the longer you spread out, well, you know what? Connor, stand up. <coughs> if I threw this at your face, just stand, no, just stay where you are. If I threw this bowling ball at your face, would it hurt? Yes. Yes. Catch, please catch, please catch, please catch. Why didn't that hurt? Did you see he lengthened the time of absorption by going with it a little bit, by cradling it a little bit, by giving with it? There is going to be a time factor that's going to also look at how momentum is absorbed. Okay? Thank you. By the way, this may be the first and last time you ever see somebody reach into a sink and pull out a bowling ball. That's a very strange image, I know. Anyways. It just seemed very surreal, but it was an easy place to put it where I knew it wouldn't roll around. So let's crunch some numbers here. Oh, you know what? Actually, a baseball has a mass of about 0.14. I looked it up. It's funny. I've been doing this question for years, and nobody has ever scanned down to the next question and said, Mr. Do it, doesn't a baseball weigh 0.14? You have it right there. I always sit there. Nobody knows much baseball. Everybody's silent. So I guess 0.25. Anyways. OK. Find the momentum of the baseball. Well, momentum is mass times velocity. I should also point out, Andy, so far I haven't given you any directions. The direction is going to be whichever way the velocity direction is going to be, and I'm going to start to throw directions in in a few questions. Okay. Alicia, what's the mass of this baseball according to the question? 0.14 is right. What's the velocity of this baseball? 35 meters per second. That's about uh, 70 miles per hour. This is not a pitcher's fastball. This might be a little league pitcher, like a kid, or could be a changeup, which is a slower pitch. Anyways, uh, 0.14 times 35. 4.9. 4.9. 4.9 what units? Kilogram meters per second. Mass times velocity. OK. Um, B says, how fast would a bowling ball need to travel to have the same momentum as this baseball? OK. Trevor, what's B asking me to find? You know, it would be cool. Well, you know what? First of all, I'll write down momentum equals mass times velocity. You know what would be cool? Trevor, it would be cool if we now had the skills where you could get the V by itself without me having to give you an entirely new equation on your formula sheet. Could you get the V by itself for me? How? Divide, divide what? The v. No, I don't want to divide the V. I want divide the, the Yes. OK. Yes? How much momentum? Our answer from part A, Trevor, yes, 4.9. But this time for the mass, we want the mass of the bowling ball. What's the mass of the bowling ball in this question? Yep. This one I can't do in my head. OK, I'll go out my calculator. Point six seven five. 
Uh, velocity, I guess, meters per second. We're not as interested in how much momentum you have. What we're really interested in, what your momentum has changed by. We're really interested in how much your momentum has changed. Because if your momentum has changed, it means you probably run into something. It's a collision, it's a tackle, it's an explosion, or something like that. So example three says this. Prove, and I'm, we've come far enough now, I'm going to actually do a couple of physics-y proofs with you. Prove that momentum change equals mass times velocity change. But first, put a star next to this. This is worth memorizing. This is worth memorizing. This is worth memorizing. Matt, you've had me long enough. Do I like memorizing stuff? So if I tell you something is worth memorizing, it really means it's worth memorizing. OK. Lynn. I said, note, change in anything is always equal to, does anybody know what change in anything is always equal to? It's always equal to final minus initial. Courtney, what's change in anything? John, what's change in anything? Ryan, what's change in anything? Ty, what's change in anything? Now I'm going to flip the question on its end. Jess, change in anything is also the same as? Rebecca, final minus initial is also the same as? Changing. Okay? Those two in my mind are interchangeable. That's going to be important, especially if those of you that signed up for Physics 12 next year, because in Physics 12, I'll say, hey, find the change in voltage. I'm going to assume you're going to clue in that it's find the final voltage, find the initial voltage, and subtract. I'm going to say, find the change in flux. What's flux? Take Physics 12, and you'll go final flux minus initial flux, and you'll find that we do changes all the time. And in particular, change in momentum is a fairly important concept, and we're going to do a proof. Hey, what's the symbol for change in? Okay. So it says, prove that change in momentum equals mass times velocity change. Well, I'm going to start out by saying, Prith, what did you say change in anything was? No, what did you say change in anything was? So change in momentum must be final minus initial. I start there. I can break the letter P momentum down. Momentum is what times what? This is our new equation. Mass times velocity. So I think this is going to be mv final minus mv initial. That's final minus initial. I don't think the mass is changing. I think the velocity is changing. Now, Lindsay, I'm going to get clever. Lindsay, is there an M in the first term on the right-hand side? Is there an M in the second term on the right-hand side? Are you saying there's an M in everything on the right-hand side? We have a name for that. In Math 9, you call it a GCF, a greatest common factor. That means I can write this as M bracket VF minus VI. Ready, Rebecca? Because this is going to be your Q. What's final minus initial the same as? What's final minus initial the same as? So if I hear you, you're telling me I can write it like that? Is that what you're saying? Rebecca, can you read to me everything after the word, pr including the word prove? Out loud. Prove? Stop. There's change in momentum. Keep going. Equal. Stop. There's an equal sign. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Times. There. There it is. Um, having said that, Alicia, if they're wanting to do a change in momentum, I tend to jump to that one because usually in the question they have given me the final velocity and initial velocity, and it's quick typing on my calculator. But for what it's worth, the change in momentum, it's the mass times the change in velocity. This idea, this notion of change in momentum is so important, we give it a special name. Can anybody figure out the special name that we give it? Impulse. Yes! Good! My little hint about reading down. Okay. Impulse. Impulse is change in momentum. When you see the word impulse, 
you can think to yourself, that's actually change in momentum. Sarah, what's another word for change in momentum? Impulse. Haley, what's another word for change in momentum? Lydia, what's another word for change in momentum? Trevor, impulse is another word for? And what's change in anything? Final minus initial. Do you see what we put all together? Okay. By the way, those of you are Star Trek fans, uh, you may have, when you watch Star Trek, they always talk about uh, using the Enterprise's impulse engines. What were they doing? They were changing the Enterprise's velocity. They weren't changing its mass. So they were using the term correctly. Impulse engines change the momentum of the Enterprise by changing its velocity by making it go forwards or backwards. Oh, okay. We're going to derive an equation for impulse, for change in momentum. But remember I said that we were going to eventually bring time into this. We're going to, Courtney, come up with an equation that includes this bad boy here, but also includes time somewhere so that we can take into account that Connor was able to catch a bowling ball without it hurting. How? Well, first we're going to take Newton's second law, which is F equals ma and solve for acceleration. Sheldon, if F equals MA, can you get the A by itself for me, please? Good. So we have F over M. I agree with that. Oh, but you know what else? At the beginning of the year, I told you that VF equals VI plus AT. Sheldon, how good are you? This is from before Christmas. Can you get the A by itself in that equation, please? So can you just rattle it off to me? Beautiful. Beautiful. Sheldon, does this equal acceleration? Say yes. Does this equal acceleration? So this equals A and this equals A. You know what else I can say then? They equal each other. They must. And that's what we're going to do in the next line. We're going to say, OK, F over M equals VF minus VI over T. By the way, we're doing another physics proof here. See. You guys have come a long ways. We can, we can handle this. Uh, then I wrote, we're going to cross multiply because we don't like fractions. So what I'm going to do, Courtney, is I'm going to times the t right to there. And I'm going to times the m right to there. OK? We're going to get this. F. I'm going to put a delta in front of the t now because for some reason it's traditional to put a delta in front of the t there. OK. Uh, equals m bracket vf minus vi. Oh, and if I recall, m bracket vf minus vi can be written as m delta v. We get this. This is the impulse equation. This is an equation that's not interested in your momentum at any one time. It's interested in what your momentum has changed by. It includes force, which you may have picked up as a pretty key concept in physics. It includes time, which you may have picked up as a pretty key concept in physics. And it's got changing velocities. This is the physics, it turns out, of most of the car safety advancements that we've accomplished over the past few decades. Huh? Yeah. So here's our big box down here. We have this. Force times a change in time. Really, the delta there is optional, because time is always a change in. But you'll see it written this way, so I'll write it this way. Is the same as mass times a change in velocity. And both of those are equal to a change in momentum. And what's another word for change in momentum that begins with the letter I? Impulse. Impulse. Or, if you want to break this apart a little bit further, force times change in time equals m vf minus vi, which is also the same as change in momentum.
this equation has three chunks. This is really three equations in one. It tells me this. It tells me that force times time equals mass times change in velocity. It tells me that change in momentum equals mass times change in velocity. And it tells me that change in momentum equals force times change in time. And again, each time I'm saying change in momentum, I could also have said impulse. Courtney, which one do I use? It depends on what they give me. It gives me forces and times. I'll probably start heading towards this one. If the question gives me more than one velocity, a final, and, an, and by now you guys are pretty good at spotting when there's a final and initial velocity, well then I'll probably head for uh, this one. If the question asks me to find a force or find a velocity, I'll probably start over here hoping that they gave me the other stuff. Really, what we need to do is we need to practice this. So let me show you some examples. Oh, I wrote here, by the way, you may have noticed that we seem to be paying more attention to vector notation than I have in my winner minus loser forces stick. And, and the reason is, Alex, most of the times when there is an impulse, when there is a change in momentum, momentum there's going to be a change in direction. We're going to have to decide ahead of time which way is positive and which way is negative. We're going to have to be very precise. So I'm putting the vector arrows to remind myself, don't get sloppy here. A good example of a momentum change is hitting a baseball with a bat. Example two, a baseball is pitched horizontally due east at 38 meters per second. After it's hit by a bat, it moves horizontally due west at 55 meters per second. Okay. Hmm. Prith, what does A want me to find? What's another word for impulse? So the first thing I'm going to write is that. The problem is I have two ways to find that from that 3 and 1 equation. I can go force times change in time, or I can go mv final minus mv initial, which is uh, m times delta v, but I just foil it up. Which one am I going to use? Prith, it depends what they gave me. Look at the preamble, the introduction to this question. Did they give me forces and times, or did they give me a couple of velocities? So you know what? I'm going to use this one. And this is kind of, Haley, the checklist you'll do each time. As soon as they talk about impulse, you'll say, well, did they give me a force and a time, or did they give me a couple of velocities? Okay. Prith. Is there a change in direction in this question? Yeah. So we need to let one direction be positive and one direction be negative. Pick. Do you want east or west to be positive? Okay, I'm going to contradict you. Although east, we've typically let be positive. I'm going to suggest to you in momentum, it's easier, it's more convenient to let the final be positive, and you'll see why in a second. So which is the final direction here? Let's let that be positive. How will we show that? You notice, Sarah, I like to be organized, but write as little as possible. How about this? Put a little plus sign above the west, put a little minus sign above the east, and in fact, Lydia, if you want to, you can even put a little negative in front of the 38, because that's the one that's going to be, the, we got to pay attention to. Is that okay? All right, let's find the impulse. Prith, what's the mass of this baseball? What's the final velocity of this baseball? Minus. What's the mass of this baseball? 0.144. Yeah. I did MV final minus MV initial. I didn't use the brackety one. Uh, what's the initial velocity of this baseball? Don't say 38, because that's going to be wrong. Negative 38. 
Do you notice, Prith, I get a minus minus, which is a plus, which is nice. That's why I tend to let the final be positive and the initial be negative, because it's final minus initial, and that will give me a minus minus, and they'll give me a plus, and my math nerd heart likes that. What impulse did this bat deliver to the ball? Point one four four times fifty five minus point one four four times negative thirty eight. What do we get? Positive or negative? Which direction is positive? West. If I had gotten a negative, what direction would I have written down? East. I'll write the whole thing and then I'll go 13.4 units. It's momentum. I know it's a change in momentum, but it's momentum. Units. Direction. West. B. B. Prith, what does B want me to find? Force. I wrote average force just because I've watched baseballs being hit in slow motion when you see the baseball warp and deform around the bat and then bounce up. I don't think the force is constant. So that's me being a fussy nerd and saying, I think technically we're not finding the force at all times. We're finding the average force, but force. So let's go again. Prith, what does the question ask me to find? Same answer you just said. Force. What did I find in part A? <coughs> Another word for which is? It would be really cool if there was an impulse equation that had force in it. Oh, <laughs> there is. Another way to write impulse is like that. This is why I said that equation sort of has three and one. And that's the other equation that's on your formula sheet, the one that I put in the box there. What did you say I want to find? How would I get the F by itself? Uh, by the way, a little nerd trivia. I told you that Newton's second law was F equals MA. Actually, Sir Isaac Newton was not that interested in acceleration. He was much more interested in momentum change. This is how he wrote Newton's second law. He wrote it as change in momentum over change in time. But it does simplify to MA. What was the impulse? Uh, 13.392. What's the time, Prith? Be very careful. It is there. Zero. Not sure. No. Point eight what? Millisecond. Not meters per second. That's milliseconds. And we're getting towards the end of the year, so I'm reviewing some of the metric prefix. Let's draw a little note here. Milli. So it's going to be prith uh, 0.8 times uh, from your formula sheet. What do I replace milli with? I, it's a 10 to the, it's negative 3 or negative 6? I can't remember which. Negative. negative, OK. 10 to the negative 3. I'll have to be careful. Now I have more than one thing on the bottom, so I'll probably have to put the bottom in brackets on my calculator. In fact, I will, not just probably. Divided by. 0.8 times 10 to the negative 3. And I get the average force is uh, 16,740 uh, 16, newtons. Direction. Did I get a positive answer or a negative answer? Then I think it's west. Which makes sense. If you have an object coming in east and it ends up going west, you applied a big force to the west. Part of the force stopped it from going east. The rest of the force accelerated it in the west direction. Keep going, Prith. What's C want me to find? What do I find in part B? It would be cool if there was an equation that had force and acceleration in it. Is there? What? Oh. It would be really
really cool if you get the A by itself. Which is going to be 1,607, uh, sorry, 16,740. I seem to have a hard time reading the number, divided by 0.144. And I get uh, a big acceleration. What's well, a baseball? They accelerate pretty fast. 116250 meters per second squared. If I wanted to add a direction, I could say it must be to the west because it was also positive. Mr. Dirick, yeah. Couldn't we have just gone A equals VF minus VI over T and found the acceleration? Yeah, yeah. This momentum equation in particular, let me scroll up, this one here, it's actually a nice little shortcut equation. It actually allows us to go winner minus loser, find a force, or find an acceleration without having to do a free body diagram, winner minus loser. It's a nice little shortcut. And it's really, really handy in analyzing collisions, which is going to be a couple lessons from now. But it does help us explain tackling in football. Anybody here on the football team? No? Anybody here play hockey? Okay, so body checking as well. But body checking, the impacts are instant because you're not allowed to wrap the person up. But similar physics. Example A, Trevor, pick on you since you're an athlete. What's the momentum of a 112 kilogram football player running due north with a speed of 3.6 meters per second? What's this question want me to find, Trevor? Well, momentum is what times what? You have it on your sheet if you want to turn back or... <coughs> so mass times velocity. By the way, I love the fact that you were figuring it out from the units, which also does work. You can look at the units. Oh, it's got to be mass times velocity. Uh, what's the mass of this football player? Yep. About 240 pounds, give or take. Uh, what's his velocity? This is a pretty fast running back. This isn't uh, Olympic speed, but this person is probably running the 100 in just over 10 seconds. How much momentum? Four hundred and three point two units, Trevor. Direction. Yep. So far, so good. You're a football player, and your coach has told you to stop this guy. Really, what your coach has told you to do is to change this guy's momentum, deliver an impulse. What does Part B want me to find? What's another word for impulse? And we write it like that. So far, so good. I said to you that there was two ways to calculate impulse. One was force times time, and one was uh, m v final minus m v initial. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, I think I can get there even easier. Because impulse is change in momentum. What's change in anything? It's all coming full circle now. Folks, what's changing anything? Let's try going final minus initial. Because, Trevor, what do we want the final momentum of this guy to be? More specific, as a number exactly, in any tackle, what's the final momentum of anybody after they're tackled? Right? Minus. What was his initial momentum? That's your answer from part A. And I don't even need a calculator for this. I think 0 take away 403.2 is just negative 403.2. What's that? Uh, units? Kilogram meters per second. 
What's that negative telling me if I wanted to write it as a direction? If the guy is running north, I have to tackle him by moving south. So I'll put a little arrow, or 403.2 kilogram meters per second south. I wouldn't say negative south, because to me, negative and south means north. I would do one or the other, and I'll take either. Momentum is what times what? Is what times what? So Trevor, you're the guy that's responsible for tackling this person. Okay. You have to give him that big an impulse south. There's two ways for you to do it. If you have a big mass, like a lineman, you don't have to have a very big velocity. And you'll still be able to stop him. If you're a smaller football player, cornerback safety, you have to have a way bigger velocity, otherwise you can't stop them. And just by that alone, we've explained why all the different sizes play the different positions. And this is why, especially in the NFL, if you're a defensive lineman, it's worth you putting on 20 or 30 pounds around your middle, as long as it doesn't slow you down too much. If it slows you down only a tiny bit, that extra math is, mass is a good trade-off, because it means you don't have to be moving as fast, and you can hit somebody and bring them to a stop. A little football physics for you. Trevor, what's part C asking me to find? Report. What did I find in part B? Impulse. It'd be cool if there was an equation that had impulse and force in it. I think that one there that I crossed out. See how we're put, by the way, you notice we're almost going in circles here. We're saying we can look at the same thing in different ways and find a lot of information from it. Impulse is also equal to force times time. Trevor, could you get the force by itself, the F by itself for me? How? I agree. I got sloppy. I didn't bother putting the delta in front of the T because there's always a delta there. So it's going to be uh, negative 403.2 divided by 0 .8. 0 0.8 seconds, that's a fairly long tackle. So this, Trevor, you're grabbing him, you're slowing him down, he's pulling you for like a step, but you're grabbing, hopping on his back and eventually riding him to the ground, but it's taking a while. Uh, Trevor, what if this time was smaller? What if you're able to bring him to a stop in a shorter time? Say in half the time, what would happen to the force? Or all, any of you, what do you think? Doubles. Double. What if this was uh, 0.1 seconds, one-eighth of the time, eight times the force. This is why in football, the big collisions are those ones. Because if time is small, and you're, because again, in football, the goal is always to have a final momentum of zero when you're tackling. That's a no-brainer. That final momentum of any tackle is always zero. Uh, oh, if the impact lasts shorter, the force must be bigger. Or again, if you watch the big offensive lineman, you'll see them wrap a guy up with one hand and drag him to a stop much smaller force required because the time lasted longer. Is that okay? Negative 504 Newtons? Or 504 Newtons south? Is that okay so far? Um, although we solved the previous problem using impulse, we really could have done it using Newton's second law. We could have gone VF equals VI plus AT and F net equals M, F equals MA. So why am I going through this? Well, again, I mentioned this earlier. Matt, impulse is a really nice tool for analyzing collisions, which we'll get to in a couple lessons. But there are some other examples that we can deal with. Consider the following example. Turn the page. Two eggs are dropped from the same height. One egg hits the floor and breaks. Splut. The second falls into a pail of water and survives. Why does the second egg survive?
Yeah. Change in momentum. I totally disagree. Chris said change in momentum. You ready? I'm going to argue both of them have exactly the same change in momentum. What's the initial velocity of this egg? Zero. What's the initial velocity of this egg? Are they both falling the same height? So I'm going to argue they both hit the ground with the same VF. They have the same VI, they have the same VF, they have the same mass. You know what? Both have the same impulse. So, back to my question. What's the main reason the second egg survives? Right. What? Right. There's another way to think about impulse. Hey, another way to think about impulse is force times time. Right? So here's what I think. In the left-hand egg, we have a very tiny time of impact that requires a massive force. Is that okay, a small letter T and a huge F? On the right hand side, we have a really big time of impact. What's the natural result of that as well? Small force, if you're gonna have the same impulse. In fact, all of you, I, I, I fibbed to you at the beginning when I said uh, absorbing the momentum of a car would be terminal. All of you have changed your momentum from mass times 100 kilometers per hour to zero. You do it every time you leave the freeway, go on the on or off ramp, drive on the city street, and end up in your driveway and come to a stop. It's just you spread that out over several minutes. No problem. Doing that over a couple of seconds, Courtney, that's what causes the injury that factor, that time factor there. If time goes, if you're, because again, Alicia, Alicia, all of you, the change in momentum from the freeway to home is the same for all of you. It's your mass times, oh, V final is zero, V initial is whatever 100 kilometers per hour is in meters per second. Uh, but if we can lengthen the time out, you'd barely notice the force. None of you think that leaving the freeway requires you to be prepared for a traumatic experience and experiencing a lot of force. Mr. Duke needs to pummel someone, but only for good physics. Damage from change in momentum isn't caused by how much momentum is absorbed. It's caused by how fast. It's caused by the time. The smaller the time, the faster you're absorbing the momentum. That's the problem. All of you have gone from 100 kilometers per hour to zero. You do it all the time. Hopefully none of you have done so in under a second. Hopefully all of you have done it over three or four minutes or longer. Uh, here's another way to think about the egg question. Why do they use bales of hay to line some racetracks? Same idea. If I can lengthen the time, increase the, because I'm stuck with that change in momentum. Courtney, uh, every race I assume has roughly the same top speed. And again, in any collision, what's your final momentum always? Zero, so I'm stuck with that change, that impulse, that change momentum. Hey, if I can bump up the time, and I don't have to do that much, especially if uh, the original time, the initial time, is really, really small. Uh, example seven, in many sports that involve striking something, tennis, baseball, soccer, golf, players are told to follow through when they come in contact with the ball. Why might this help the ball leave with greater velocity? Some of you need to learn some sports physics. It's the same answer that I've been ranting on. What have I been ranting about for the past two or three minutes? Lydia. Okay, so let's suppose you've lifted weights and you've maxed out your force. But you want to deliver a bigger impulse to the ball. You want it to have a bigger change in velocity. You want it to leave faster. Bigger time.
So larger T means larger, and really it'll be a bigger final velocity because the initial whatever is coming, especially if you're starting out at rest. Okay. This is why, any play tennis? For fun? Okay. To hit it, or baseball? What happens in a bunt when you don't follow through? What are you really doing when you bunt the ball? You're lowering the time of impact so you can't transfer as much impulse. Or when you do a drop shot in tennis, what you do in a drop shot is you pull back right as you hit it. And the idea is you're trying to shrink the amount of time of contact. Nearly done. Which has more momentum, a 1,000 kilogram car moving at 100 kilometers per hour or a 2,000 kilogram truck moving at 50 kilometers per hour? Here we go. Which has more momentum? A 1,000 kilogram car moving at 100 kilometers per hour or a 2,000 kilogram truck moving at 50 kilometers per hour? Yep. We could do the unit conversion, but look, they got the same mass. Oh, sorry, twice the mass, half the speed. This is really saying momentum is mass times velocity. Does the moving object have momentum? Momentum is what times what? Does a moving object have momentum? This is meant to be really obvious. Yes. Does a moving object have impulse? What's impulse another word for? Changing momentum. So does a moving object automatically have a changing momentum? Not if it's going at a constant speed. Apparently I need to have an apostrophe there. Or if you want to, uh, the only way you have an impulse, the only way you have a changing momentum if you're accelerating. And as soon as I say accelerating, now you're thinking, oh, so forces cause an impulse. Yes, an unbalanced force always causes a changing momentum. Two more, we're done. When you jump from your lab table to the ground, why do you bend your knees as you land? Or when you are on a playground and you jump from the playground top part to the ground, why do you bend your knees as you land? Yes. Increase time lowers F. Because you're still stuck with that same impulse. Your final is going to be zero because you're coming to a stop. Your initial is whatever your velocity is that you jump from. Yeah, you lengthen the time of impact. This is also uh, what uh, stunt people do when they fall into those airbags. It's all about lengthening the time of impact. Can't change their V final. They're stuck with that. Can't change their V initial. They're stuck with that, depending on how high they jump from. Which of the followings is more likely to, to knock out a, bo a boxer? Leaning back while taking a punch? or leaning in while taking a punch. Leaning in while taking a punch? Yes. Why? That's really the question. So B? Hmm. Explain your answer. Leaning in because really what's happening now is that fist that's hitting me to come to a stop has to stop my face and then move me back. I'm going to have a much longer impulse, a much longer time of impact. Wait, 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 if you're going away? If you're going away. For A? For B. Well, really, I'm fudging things a bit here. Really, what I should say is, we haven't yet talked about conservation momentum and collision. Leaning in, so what has to happen, the punch has to bring your face to a stop and, there's a, and move your face backwards. So really, what I should say is, there is an increased impulse. 
and the result of that is going to be an increased force and time. I'm not, uh, what I want you to realize is less about example 12 and much more about this notion here of this, by the way, this explains what seatbelts do. Right? And all a seatbelt has to do, let's suppose Alex in a car accident, normally without a seatbelt, you would hit the windshield in 0.1 seconds. All a seatbelt has to do is get that to 0.2 and it's cut the force in half. That's pretty easy to engineer. Oh, and instead of going from 0.1, if we can get it to like 0.5, we've cut the force divided by 5. Well, now that's gone from death to injury to bruise to owie. This is really most of car safety advances in the past 40 years have been all about lengthening the time of impact. What's your homework? You'll probably be able to get it all done in class. Every question. Um, some of them are just fill in the blanks and circle. And in fact, some of them that you have to do calculations for, if you want to, you can just do your work right on the back sheet, I think. I think the back page is blank, yeah? Or there's a half a back, black. You can do this on a certain piece of paper if you want to, but if you want to do this all on here, you can. Momentum is mass times velocity. Impulse is change in momentum. And there's two ways to calculate impulse, force times time, or mv final minus mv initial. We're going to be going over this a bit more next class as well.